Hello Rocker, uh, I mean, hey everyone, we've had video after video of Mission to Argus cards and I figured everyone could use a little break, so today's video will be something I haven't done before. I'll be looking at this week's highest rated cards on the custom Hearthstone subreddit and giving my notes on the cards. I'll be joined in this endeavor by everyone's favorite murloc, Sir Finley Murgleton. Hello! We'll be using a rating system Finley invented. There are three ratings, rot, good and really good. Proper good. Oh, sorry, my bad. And proper good. Let's take a look at the first card. The first card is Precise Quick Shooter, brought to you by Reddit user DRP with no E or Dr. P with no E, I'm not sure. This is a 3 mana 3 2 minion for Demon Hunter with tradable and quick draw, deal 3 damage to the lowest health enemy twice. But if you trigger its outcast effect, it cancels the quick draw effect. This is a very interesting new take on quick draw. We've never seen a card with both quick draw and outcast and that makes sense because if you trigger one, you're likely to also trigger the other, but with this card, you don't want to trigger both. To make use of the quick draw effect, you'd need to draw another card on the same turn and that might not be easy to do. The quick draw effect is very powerful, but I'm wondering if it could perhaps be a little bit stronger since it's so hard to trigger. Maybe just giving the quick shooter some higher stats could work. Anyway, let's give this card a rating and uh, judging from your smile Finley, I think we're both in agreement. This card is... PROPER GOOD! Up next, we have a card by reddit user eagle4317. This is a spell called Blitz Them Down for Demon Hunter. Hmm, Blitz? I think that's German. Finley, do you speak German? Uh, yeah? Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Anyway, Blitz Them Down is a new twist on quests called Quest Loop, which the OP explained is a type of quest that keeps repeating no matter how many times you complete it. This one's quest is that you need to attack with your characters 9 times and the reward is giving your hero plus 3 attack on that turn. I'll start off by saying that I think quest loops are a really freaking cool idea and I hope Lizard sees this and gets inspired. I think the card also seems fairly balanced. If there's one thing I'll add though, it's that the reward is perhaps a tiny bit anti-synergistic with the quest, since if you attack with your hero to finish the quest, the plus 3 attack would go to waste, but I guess this could be played around by just finishing the quest with a minion and then attacking with your hero after. It is sportsmanlike to only attack once per turn. Come on Finley, you're never gonna win like that. Anyway, what would you rate this card? Proper good. I agree. The quest loop as a concept is a very interesting idea and I hope we see more cards like this from Eagle4317. Next, let's review the card Next Stage by reddit user Pyrotox. This 2 mana spell for shaman will transform all your murlocs into random beasts. Oh bother, oh, that's rot. Ah come on Finley, you're just saying that cause they'll no longer be murlocs. Be realistic, what would you rate this? Very well. Hmm. Good. Yeah, I agree that this isn't proper good. Murlocs are usually very cheap and beasts are a bit more all-rounded, so this is probably something you'd want to run in your murloc deck, but unlike the two cards we just saw, this design is just a bit more basic. I also think it's a bit too swingy. If you're lucky, you could transform your one mana murloc into a 10 cost beast on turn 2, and that just wouldn't be fair. I would increase the cost of this card, but mostly I'm just not a huge fan of the design. Looks like Dr. P with no E has been busy, cause they made another top voted card of the week. Vinyl Coin is a 0 mana spell for Rogue that will give you 1 mana crystal this turn only, but Vinyl Coin also has a finale effect that will give you 2 mana instead. That is proper good! It sure is. This is a very interesting spin on Finale. Usually you want to use a coin before playing any other card, but this card incentivizes you to play it at the end of the turn. I would say more than anything else, this card is just very well balanced. Up next we have the weapon, Raging Flame Blade by Additional Bees. Hello, what's this? This 4 mana 5-2 weapon for Shaman and Warrior will transform into an elemental rush after your hero attacks with it. Usually you'd summon a 5-1 elemental with rush, but if you manage to buff the weapon, the stats of the elemental will increase. The OP did not include a token for the elemental, but judging from the art of the weapon, I'd imagine it would be very fiery. I think the flavor of this card is top notch, but perhaps it's a bit too powerful for its cost. What do you say Finley? Proper good! Another proper good? Wow, how many does that make now? Four? Let's see if the last card will be rated the same. 
The last top rated card of the week is The Azerite Ogre by Acid No Bravery. As the name suggests, this is an excavate reward and a neutral one at that, and the OP specified that it would be available only in the wild format. The Azerite Ogre is a 4 mana 5 5 element, so like other excavate rewards, but the Azerite Ogre is also a Titan with 3 Titan abilities. That said, the Ogre has a 50% chance to use the wrong ability. Its 3 abilities are Azerite Music, Discover a Finale card and set each player's mana crystals equal to its cost. Azerite Forge, Discover a Forge card and gain 2 mana crystals. And finally, Azerite Pistol. Discover a quick draw card. The next card you play costs zero. This was the highest rated card of the week. Wouldn't it be funny if we rated this Rod Finley? That would be rude. Yeah, okay. Still, for an excavate reward, this card does seem a little bit weak. Setting each player's mana crystals equal to a card you discover its cost is not always good for you, and there's a pretty decent chance you're already at 10 mana when you excavate this treasure, so the Azerite Forge might not always help either. Therefore, the Azerite Pistol is definitely the best reward, but since you're not guaranteed to get that, playing the Azerite Ogre might actually backfire. OP explained that they wanted to mash all of the Year of the Wolf into a single card, and I think they did a really good job with that, but I also think this card should have stronger abilities, at least the first two. So with that in mind, what would you rate this card, Finley? This is good. Agreed. Those were all the top rated cards of the week we'll be looking at today. I hope you enjoyed this little break from the usual content. Next time we'll be back with another video for Mission to Argus. We're a little over halfway done now. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the comments below and subscribe to the channel for more custom hostel content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time!